What is up, challenge group? Hope you're having a great day. Wanted to talk about my hashtag triggered post where I successfully drove past Wendy's and didn't buy Wendy's, but um, really got present to the fact that sometimes your cheat meals, days, bad things are triggered by location, by time, by place, by people. And I promise to give some tips and tricks on how to overcome some triggers because one, it's a mental game. It's a mental battle and you got to get through it. And sometimes you can like grit your teeth and hold through a day. And other times maybe you need some more stuff on your side. So here's uh, some of my best tips. So I had a couple of cravings, uh, bad habits I had to really give up. And one was when I first started my journey was having a beer at the end of the day. So my trigger was that I would come home after work and I would head to the fridge and I would grab something cold, either a beer or a soda. And it was like got to be every single day. So the trigger, work hard, come home, like entering the door. And it's just like a natural indication, like go to the fridge, grab something. And it was like a signal to my day to, um, that it was time to relax. So one way to, um, do something, you know, so that's the trigger. And guess what? I'm still going to come home at the end of work every day, right? I'm like, not, not, I'm not just going to avoid that. So, um, in that kind of case, you can replace a bad habit, which having a soda or beer every single day, not a super great habit, right? With a good habit. So I use Shakeology and I would just come home. I would get triggered, but like just needing to relax. But then I replaced it with a really great habit instead of a bad habit. Okay, so if it's a time and place look, uh, trigger and there's a habit, so let's let's go back to that Wendy's example. Um, one, I could do things that would replace the need to have a, uh, a craving, which means that, hey, I could actually eat something beforehand so I'm not just so starving where I don't need an exceptional amount of willpower to avoid Wendy's. But let's say I do go to Wendy's and there's, I'm still driving by, I still have the, the indication to pull in. Well, I could just make a commitment to order something healthier on the menu. So replace a, ba- a great habit with a good habit. They have uh, excellent salads at Wendy's. And so you could go have a salad, be a little easy on the dressing, would be way better than the um, three junior bacon cheeseburgers and three spicy chicken go wraps. I'm not supposed to, you know, like stuff like that, that I would actually eat. I would do that. That would be about 2000 calories in a meal. And the salad, depending on how much dressing I put in, is around that 550. So I'm like, that's a significant improvement in the trigger. So a lot of people drive by Starbucks at a certain time of day and they have to pull in. All right. So one, this could be affecting you in your wallet. This could be affecting you in your health, right? Because depending on what kind of drink. So one, if it's affecting your wallet... Um, then it's you could brew your own, saving yourself a significant amount of money, and then. Um, but guess what? You're still gonna be triggered when you pull into Starbucks. There's just something about the corner of the street that it's on, that the when you drive by it, that's that's gonna want to pull you in there. So take a different route. Avoid it for a week. Kind of break the system and replace it with your homebrew. Replace it with something cheaper. Okay, if it's a health thing and you're ordering the candy coffee and it's full of all this stuff, uh, there's multiple, multiple ways for you to make substitutions so that it's actually not as bad for you. Like, let's say um, you, I mean, I don't even know coffee. I just know coffee is a big thing. But um, instead of sugar, no whip or something like that or or a light, I know there's my wife orders skinny things somehow, but uh, I'll do some research, but Making that one substitution, if it's just an everyday thing, is probably 100, 200 calories, depending on how big of a change it is that you make, okay? And then over the course of a week, so times seven, that adds up to a lot. And you do that times a month, that adds up to a lot. You do that times a year, it adds up to a lot. So replace a bad habit with a good habit or just avoid the location and do some things to mitigate the urge to pull in. So the other thing, the, and this one's probably the trickiest thing, is the people. Uh, I would go out with my family for Fridays, and we would have margaritas. There's probably that one friend who always wants to go to that one place, and 
that might just not align with your goals. And so where fitness and nutrition is hard is we, we place it as an either or thing. Like I either hang out with this friend and then I'm going to make bad habits. Like it's just a given or I can kind of go dark and I have to give up friendship. I have to give up being able to be social and get out and enjoy life with maintaining healthy. So it's, we have it as like this either or scenario. And the fact is, it's just not like that. So what I found is if you have a very authentic conversation with people in your life, hey, here's what I'm up to, here's what I would like to do, a lot of times people are really open to that. Um, so if, if you're triggered to do something maybe that doesn't align with your goals with a certain person, have very authentic conversations with that person and enroll them in this new version of you and create something that you could do together that involves you sticking with your goals. Maybe invite them to this challenge group. So hope those things were helpful. I would love to hear your best tips of how to avoid being hashtag triggered. Uh, have a great day. I'll catch you later.